Okay, everybody, today we're going to start an entirely new unit or new chapter. We're going to talk about how we solve systems of equations. And whenever I think about Algebra 1, this is one of the most um, integral, most important things that I think kind of encompasses what Algebra 1 is all about. This is classic algebra stuff right here. And so um, if you would have been a part of the advanced class last year and you would have made it all the way through the year, this is something you probably would have talked about. This is something that the regular math class has to do, um, but they've actually already had it in their book, so we're gonna be a little bit behind them, but this is solving systems of equations, and the very first lesson is about substitution. So there are lots of ways to solve systems of equations. I can think of like three different ways. Substitution is just one method, and that's the one we're gonna focus on today. So. Before we get going, what is a system of equations? A system of equations is just a group of equations that all have the same variables, so like x's and y's. Um, if there's two equations, that means there's two variables, right? It would be impossible to solve this if we only had one equation. If there's two variables, you need to have two equations in order to solve it. Eventually at the high school, you might have some that have three variables. And if they did ever give you three different variables, you would need three equations to solve it. But that's not gonna happen in this class. All we'll have in this class is two equations for two variables. It'll usually be X and Y. It doesn't have to be X and Y, it can be anything. Um, if it was a, like a real life scenario, you might have different letters for your variables. But if it's just a regular problem, it'll be X's and Y's. Okay, and then what is a solution? The solution is the magic combination of X's and Y's that will make both equations true. Right? I can find a number for x and a number for y that if I plug it into both equations, both of these will equal what it says they're going to equal. The top one will equal 11, the second one would equal negative 7. Now, just because I made this up myself and I already know the answer, I'm just going to tell you what the answer to this one is. The answer to this one is x equals 3 and y equals 4, or the better way to write it is like this, 3 comma 4. And I'll just show you why that works. If you put 3 in the spot of x, and if you put 4 in the spot of y, the top equation will equal 11. Let me go ahead and do that. 3 plus, okay, y is 4. 2 times 4 equals 11, right? 3 plus 2 times 4 is 8. 8 plus 3 is 11. So the top equation works. It equals 11. And then if I put 3 in for x and 4 in for y into this bottom equation, the x is 3. So this is 3 times 3 minus, and then the y is 4, 4 times 4, this should equal negative 7. 9 minus 4 times 4 is 16. 9 minus 16 is negative 7. And so it's a magic combination of x and y, x and y coordinates, that if you plug it in into the spot of the variable that it belongs to, it will make both equations true. Both equations have to be true. It can't just work for one, it's gotta work for both. So that is what your solution is. Your solution is a point on the graph that the lines would intersect at if we're graphing it. But we'll actually graph it another day. We're not gonna do that today. That's one of the other actual strategies. So today's questions are gonna start out super simple. They're just gonna have you check some solutions. They're gonna give you a possible answer. And all you need to do is say yes or no, is that the right answer? And the way you do that is by plugging in the number, substituting in the x and the y into the each equation and seeing if it's true or false. So sometimes the format will look like this. It'll give you a possible x and a possible y, and it asks you, are these x's and y's, is this point the magic combination that's gonna make both equations true? And you can't really tell just by looking at it, so you're just gonna have to plug it in. So I'm gonna redo this top one. So if I do this top equation, instead of the, letter x, I'm going to put 1 right there, because that's my x-coordinate, uh, and then it says plus y, but instead of y, I'm going to put this y-coordinate, plus negative 2, does that equal 0? So I'm just going to work it out and see. 2 times 1, that's 2. Does 2 plus negative 2 equal 0? Yes, it does. So the top one is good, but that's not good enough. I also need to check the other equation now. So, whoops, sorry about that, hit my phone. Now I'm going to try this equation right here, the second one, same idea. Instead of writing it down with an x, I'm gonna plug this in there. One goes on the spot of the x, negative one, plus two times y, the y is actually negative two. Um, so two times negative two, I'm gonna put that in parentheses just so you don't think it's a times and then a subtracting. And there you get uh, what we need to do. So we've got negative one plus two times negative two, that is negative four. Does negative one plus negative four equal five? It does not. 
negative one plus negative four equals negative five. So this worked on the top equation, but it did not work on the second one. So is this a solution? This is not a solution. It was close. It was halfway there, but halfway isn't good enough. No, this is not the solution that we're looking for for that problem. Now, the other type of question, they will give you the um, system of equations over here, and then they'll give you a, an actual graph. The graph is not there to confuse you. All you need from the graph is find the points where the lines intersect. Find the point, excuse me, not points, there's only one. Find the point where the lines cross, the intersection. The name of that point is, let's see, one to the right and four up. The name of this point is one, four. So basically it's asking you, put one in the place of X, put four in the place of Y over here and see if you get the right answer. All right, let's do it. So I'm gonna do this top one right here, this one right here. So instead of Y equals three X plus one, in the spot of the Y, I'm gonna put four. In the spot of the X, I'm gonna put a one. So this is gonna be three times one. Uh, so then if I just copy the rest of it down, three plus one, does three plus one equal four? Yes, it does. So the first equation is true. You really don't have to do the smiley faces. I'm just doing it for fun. Let's do the last one and double check this one. Now we'll look at this guy right here. Y equals negative X plus five. Okay, now I'm gonna substitute in. The Y is four. Negative x, the x is 1. Does n this equation make sense? Does 4 equal negative 1 plus 5? Negative 1 plus 5, that is 4. So 4 equals 4, that is true. So this had both of them work. Smiley face here, smiley face here. So was that the correct solution? Yes, that graph matches those equations. This point right here is where the two lines crossed. And it plugged, when I plugged it in, it worked. So those questions are gonna be easy. All it is is substitution. And if I'm being honest with you, that's almost too easy for our grade, but they're gonna start you out nice and easy. It's the beginning of a new chapter. All right, here is the real meat and potatoes, the real concept that you need to get better at, that we need to learn today, that we need to kind of practice a little bit. How do we solve a system whenever it doesn't give us the answer, right? We have to come up with the answer on our own. It's not just gonna pop in your head like the one that I gave you. This is the strategy that you probably want to use graphing. You want to graph whenever both equations are in slope intercept form. Remember what slope intercept form looks like? It looks like this. You know what I mean? The letter Y is all by itself on the left hand side. It's isolated. And then you have the slope with the X connected to it. And then just the adding or subtracting part at the end, which is the Y intercept number. That is what you really, really, really should use graphing for. If both equations are written in this format, it's amazing to graph it. Amazing. Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. We got an announcement here. We're setting up hot chocolate and tea because there's no heat on in the building. It's like 50 degrees in my room right now. I'm not exaggerating. It really is 50 degrees. Okay, so sorry about that. So here is your system of equations. We're gonna graph both of these. Our goal is graph them both and see where the lines cross. With the point where the lines cross is going to be your answer. Now, it's awesome to do this on a computer because your lines will always be perfectly straight and they've got the coordinate plane drawn perfectly here. I kind of freehanded it and I'm, maybe I'm not the best at spacing it all out, but I'll do the best I can. So let's just focus on this one right here. Let's just graph this. I hope you remember how to graph these, right? How do you gra graph a line that's in slope intercept form? Well, you can put the slope on there if you want. The slope is one. But that's not the, the part where we need to start. The end of the equation is the beginning of your graph, minus two, negative two. That is your y-intercept. The y-intercept is negative two because it has minus two at the end. So I'm gonna start my graph right here, two places below the origin. Boom, boom, two places below. Now, what is the slope of this line? The slope is right here, right? The slope is the one. This is the b, negative two. So the slope is one. Remember what that means. That means you're gonna rise one, you're gonna run over one. You're gonna go up one and over one, up one and over one, up one and over one. I say over, that's to the right, up one and over one. I could keep doing this as long as I wanted to, but I'm just gonna do a few dots. I'm gonna draw my line on the computer. This would be nice and perfectly straight. Mine wobbles a little bit here, but I'm just doing the best I can. Okay. Now, when I do the other one, the other line, it should eventually cross with this one. My other line is right here. Y equals negative X or negative one X, right? Negative one X plus four. The end of the equation is your Y intercept. That's the beginning of your graph. The end of this equation is plus four. So I'm gonna go up four, 
one, two, three, four, boom. Four on the y-axis. And then my slope is right here. The slope is always the coefficient what the x is being multiplied by. The slope is negative one. Remember what that means. You can always put it over one if you need to. This is your rise, this is your run. So when it says I'm rising negative one, I'm not going up, I'm going down. I'm going down one and one to the right. Down one and one to the right. Down one and one to the right. And you see, boom, right there, how our lines crossed. I didn't draw it maybe the best, but hopefully you can kind of see that. This is where the computer really helps because it's nice and perfectly straight and that dot is a little bit wobbly there. You see how your lines crossed? This point where your lines cross, right here, is your answer. What is the name of this point? Well, let me see. From the origin, I'm going three to the right. I'm going three to the right and up one. So my answer is three, one. Now, if I was doing this for a million dollars, would I go back and plug three in the spot of X and plug one in the spot of Y and double check my math on both of these to make sure it works? Yes, I definitely would. But I really don't feel like I need to do that because I'm just uh, working them out today for the very first time. But that's how you're going to do these. Let's do another one just to make sure. If they give you a fraction for the slope, don't have a panic attack. You can do it. It's fine. We're smart enough for these, right? Here's this one. I'm going to be focusing on this guy right here. The y-intercept is the number at the end. The y-intercept is positive 3. So I'm going to go up from the on the y-axis to 3. That's what this tells me right there, right? And now the slope is 1 half. The slope is 1 half. That means 1 up, 2 to the right. Remember that bottom number, your denominator is always how many you go to the right. So I'm going to go up 1, 2 spaces to the right up one space and two spaces to the right. I'm going to do my best to make it as straight of a dot as I can, even though I'm freehanding it here. And I'm going to do this other one. Now this one's a little bit cre uh, creepy looking here with all these negatives, so we can make it work. The y-intercept right here, negative five. So that's going to be down five below. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> About the temperature it feels like in my room right now, right? And then the slope of this one is this number right here, the negative three over two. Remember, negative is going to be down. That bottom number is always to the right. I don't care if it's negative or positive. Uh, you're always going to go to the right. So I'm going to go down 3, which I'm out of space. <laughs> down 3 over 2. Okay, since I am freehanding it, you can go backwards. You can do everything backwards. Instead of going down into the right, I couldn't go up into the left, and it'll still work. Let me actually try that. I'm going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3, over 2. I'm going to do it one more time. Up 3 more, 1, 2, 3, over 2. Okay, now here's where my situation doesn't look too nice. My lines technically aren't touching, are they? That means my purple line probably isn't long enough. So let me keep my, um, go back to my purple one. This should have been up one and two to the right, and so I was going this way. If I do everything backwards, down one and two to the left, it should work. Down one and two to the left, right there. Down one more, two to the left, right there. There we go, now we found it down one more to the left would have been down here. So sometimes when you freehand it and you're not using a computer, you've kind of got to extend your lines out. But look, there it is, guys, perfect. Right here, the lines crossed right on the x-axis. That is the point, let me see, from the origin, I'm going one, two, three, four, four to the left, negative four, and I'm not going up or down at all. It's right on the x-axis, negative four, zero. Negative four, zero. And now that I'm plugging that in there, I'm noticing that that is actually not the right answer. Um, it's probably it's just because I freehanded everything. It might be negative four one. Like if I put negative four right here, one half times negative four plus three, that actually equals one. Uh, if I put negative four in this other one, negative three over two times negative four minus five. Let's see what that equals. Uh, four goes two goes into four. Yeah, it's actually one. So sorry about that, guys. This is the only bad thing about not having a computer and having to freehand it. My dot was actually right here. And when I freehanded it, it was kind of hard to... It was kind of hard to see that. It actually was... When I freehanded it, I kind of freehanded it a little too low. And that's the bad thing about doing it on a... <laughs> on a whiteboard instead of using a computer. On a computer, that would have worked perfectly. Negative four and one is my answer. Negative four and one. So sorry about that. Okay, I'm gonna do one last one. This is gonna be the hardest one, and then that should wrap up this video because I know I'm gonna be close to 20 minutes by the time I'm finished. 
What do you do if they're not in slope-intercept form? Look at these equations. Is the letter Y isolated all by itself? Nope, not on either one. And this is miserable. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I would not use graphing on these uh, on a normal situation, but you all don't know the other strategies yet. So today, when they give you one that's not in slope-intercept form, what are you gonna have to do? We're well, gonna have to kind of do some math on your own down here. You're gonna have to kind of buckle it up, put on your big boy pants, big girl skirt, whatever you wanna put on, and you'll be able to do this. Get the letter Y isolated all by itself. Like, what's happening to the Y over here? It's being added with 2X. How can I undo addition with 2X? I can subtract 2X. Whatever you do on one side, you do the same thing on the other side. That equals zero. 2X minus 2X equals zero. Y equals is the only thing left on the left-hand side. That's perfect. This, you cannot subtract those. Don't you dare try to subtract that and say it equals 3X. Never in a million years. This doesn't have an X on it, and this one does. You cannot subtract them because they're not like terms. Um, I'm actually going to put the X first. Remember how the X usually comes at the beginning, MX plus B. The 5 is a positive 5, so I'm going to put plus. Okay, this is the same thing as this up here, right? Don't know why I have this in blue and one in purple. These are the same. So actually, let me go ahead and graph this. I'm going to start at 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The slope is negative 2, down 2, over 1. I'm actually going to make this one nice and neat. I'll go down one more down two more over one. Okay, so I did four dots to the best of my ability. Hopefully that line is gonna match up with my other one. Now I'm gonna do this other one. Let's do this one in red, right here. You've gotta kinda use your own little skills. We did this way back at the beginning of the year. This one's gonna be a little bit more disgusting. The Y has two things happening to it. It's got the three X and it has the negative two that we're gonna have to get rid of. Um, this is going to need to be subtracted. Notice, I did not say adding. Some people see this and they think, oh, that's subtracting, so I want to do adding. Whoops, nope. If you did adding right here, 3 plus 3 would not equal 0. 3x plus 3x would equal 6x's. 3x minus, this is positive, so we need to do subtracting. 3x minus 3x. Okay, so that's going to give me this, negative 2y equals, and I'm actually going to put the x at the beginning, and the 4 is a positive, so I'm going to put plus 4. Okay, on the last one, we were done right here. But look, my x, excuse me, my letter y still has this negative 2. This is being multiplied, isn't it? There's a multiplying dot right there. So instead of multiplying, I need to do dividing, dividing, dividing. And now, after this one last step, I'll have my answer. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is 1. That's why I cross that out. Negative divided by negative right here. Negative divided by negative is positive. So I'm going to make it positive 3 over 2x. And then here plus 4 and dividing by negative 2, the signs are different, right? Plus and minus, when the signs are different, your answer is negative. 4 divided by 2 is 2. This is the same thing as my red circle up here. These are the same equation. And so now I can graph this one. The y-intercept is negative 2, two places below the origin. And then the slope is positive 3 over 2. That's up 3, 2 to the right. Up 3 from this dot. Up 1, 2, 3, 2 to the right. Perfect. I got my answer right there. I don't even need to make any more dots. So this is my answer, and that point is the point that I need. Two to the right, one up. The point is two, one, and that is my answer. Okay, so you can see that when they try to be mean to you, they will not give it to you in slope-intercept form. But do you have the skills to solve it for Y? You should, right? We've been doing this all year. We did it way back in the first quarter. Get the letter Y isolated. You might have to do some subtracting with the X or adding with the X, whatever it is. You might have to do some dividing right here. We had to do two steps, right? We subtracted on both sides and then we divided on both sides. So you'll sometimes have to do two steps, but we can do it. Okay, I'm gonna put some questions on our website today. Give them your best shot. Uh, email me if you have problems. I'll be checking my phone and my email all day. Um, and I will be more than happy to help you if you need help. All right, everybody, have a good one out there. Hope you're staying warm. Hope your house is warmer than my classroom. I'm probably gonna head for the uh, heater as soon as I get home. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.